SpaceX is moving towards its first orbital test of the Starship. This month, Starship passed static fire test for the first time, starting all six engines simultaneously. That successful static fire test of all upper stage engines allows us to be hopeful that the current Starship 24 prototype is ready for testing. Next in line are even more grandiose tests of the Super Heavy Accelerator with 33 engines. So far, the Accelerator has been tested by static fire 7 engines in 7 seconds, but the prototype was later rolled back to the factory for robustness upgrades ahead of flight. Musk has indicated that those upgrades might involve fortifying Super Heavy Booster 7's thrust section to ensure it can survive Raptor engine failures. With 33 Raptor V2 engines powering it and plenty of evidence those Raptors are far from perfect in reliability, the concern is understandable, even if the response is a bit different than the SpaceX norm. Well, you know Super Heavy is insanely powerful when all engines kick off. The proof is in the black burnt streaks on the OLM's pedestal after booster static fire. After the test of only seven engines, the team was immediately upgrading and testing the water deluge system on the structure. In addition, more than 30 workers on the orbital launch mount with sparks flying everywhere 24-7 over the last few days installed additional blast shielding to protect the interior of the structure and prepare for the historic static fire. For a full wet dress rehearsal, or WDR, which also has never been done with Super Heavy, SpaceX would need to fill the booster with around 3,400 tons or 7.5 million pounds of propellant. Out of an abundance of caution, Super Heavy B-7 will likely have far less propellant aboard during almost all of its static fire tests, but a full static fire with a full load of propellant simulating most pre-launch conditions will likely be one of the last main goals of any static fire campaign. At full thrust, 33 Raptor 2 engines will likely burn around 25 tons or 55,000 pounds of propellant per second, so a huge amount of propellant will be needed regardless. The goal, same as it's been for half a year, is to qualify the first super heavy booster for flight. To do so, SpaceX must at long last static fire a Super Heavy with all necessary Raptor engines installed. For Booster 7 and its near-term successors, that means 33 new Raptor 2 engines capable of generating a total of 7,600 metric tons or about 16.7 million foot-pounds of thrust. Elon Musk and his company are determined to conduct an orbital test flight of Starship before the end of this year, although options include carrying out the mission through the spring of 2023. That test flight will take off from Starbase, sending Ship 24 on an orbital trip that will end with a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean near the Hawaiian island of Kauai. Booster 7 will separate, perform a partial return, and land in the Gulf of Mexico or return to Starbase and be caught by the launch tower. If the flight's a success, SpaceX will be a major step closer to its goals of revolutionizing spaceflight and making humans a multi-planetary species. This flight is also really important for Starship to be able to launch from Florida, as they can't bring Starship to LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center until they have a good and reliable vehicle. Unfortunately, that's only the plan, and it should be said that SpaceX has not received final permission from the FAA to conduct a test orbital launch. The authorities in June required the company to eliminate 75 violations in order to obtain permission to fly. SpaceX's Starbase facility, located in a small town called Boca Chica, Texas, right on the southern tip of Texas along the Rio Grande River and the U.S.-Mexico border. For the last few years, SpaceX has used that site to construct full-scale prototypes of Starship, the company's next-generation monster rocket designed to take people and cargo to deep space destinations. The problem is, SpaceX didn't originally plan to launch the future Moon and Mars rocket from Texas. They purchased their first piece of land in Boca Chica back in 2012 with the intent to create a purely commercial launch site where the company could launch smaller Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Ultimately, SpaceX envisioned launching up to 12 times a year from the area, away from the hustle and bustle of a much busier launch site in Cape Canaveral, Florida. With that goal in mind, the FAA conducted full environmental review of SpaceX's plans, and in 2014, the agency published an Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, detailing how those smaller launches would affect the area. 
However, SpaceX plans have significantly changed since the first EIS was published. Beginning in 2018, the company seriously ramped up production activity in Boca Chica after deciding to devote the South Texas facility solely to the production of Starship prototypes. The more modest commercial launch facility that SpaceX once imagined has morphed into a thriving installation filled with massive warehouses and tents and dominated by round-the-clock construction conducted by thousands of employees. As SpaceX's presence in the area grew, the company also began conducting high-altitude flight tests with the Starship prototypes, launching the vehicles up to heights of 30 to 40,000 feet in the air before attempting to land them back on Earth. Most of those tests ended in fiery explosions, with only one successfully sticking its landing. One prototype blew apart just before it was supposed to land in March 2021, spreading metal debris across the nearby wildlife refuge. The test flights, combined with ongoing construction and ground testing, have led to growing tension with the nearby community. Starbase is situated next to a small neighborhood of a couple of dozen homes called Boca Chica Village, which is only really accessible via one lone state highway that connects to Starbase. That road's frequently closed during testing and other demonstrations, limiting access to both the village and the nearby beach. Residents also complained of disruption to their daily lives as they're often asked to leave their home during major tests. Many in Boca Chica Village have sold their property to SpaceX, though a few residents have held on to their home. Finally, in September 2021, the FAA released a Draft Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, laying out SpaceX's updated plans for the area. SpaceX has since scrapped its plans for a natural gas pretreatment system, a power plant, and desalinization plant, according to the FAA's decision released. The company's also modified capabilities of its Raptor engine, which is used to propel Starship, and because of these changes, SpaceX doesn't need as many engines for its vehicles as previously expected. But the FAA concluded that this wouldn't discernibly change the environmental impact. As part of this decision, the FAA will not conduct another EIS, which could potentially save SpaceX some time as it moves forward with its first orbital launch. But the company still has work to do. The more than 75 actions the FAA listed includes things SpaceX can do to address its impact on air quality, sound levels, and access to the nearby beach. The company will need to provide more advance notice of launches to local authorities and general public for one. After all, the company still needs to receive a license from the FAA to launch its first Starship vehicle to orbit from the area. There's still much hope to move things along. Starship must fly one day or NASA's Artemis program will fail as well. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, subscribe, press the like button, and share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.